say if you were, hello again, say if you were um, welding a seam along, and I had these two and I put them together. Now again, it's kind of, it's warm in here today. Um, my garage, you know, it kind of holds together, but it's not terribly well hold together. I could do the same thing with the, the tool and go over them um, slightly, um, the hot tool. Um, wherever I was going to attach them. Now I could do that a little bit. And I guess I'll put it right here. Also, I want to make that fit up a little better, which I didn't bother to do. Um, and that helps a little bit. But you can take and you're, with your, um, sorry, your soldering iron and I would do a little bit, kind of tack it in place first. a little bit from the other side. Now, remember when it gets, this is rather large, so you can see better, um, but if you're doing smaller things, kind of more delicate. So if I do a lot of this, that weld area is really soft for a long period of time. So I don't want to do it, I want to let, I might let this side, and I can also bring in and take some off of here and fill that in, build it up a little bit or fill in the divot. So I can scoop a little bit off and drip it back in. I know it's exciting. But remember, it's still really soft. I'm gonna go to the other side. Let it cool, I'm gonna rush this because um, and I could kind of go along and get it here, too. I might build that up more, or not. Maybe I like that little texture that I got going there. So it's essentially welding. If you, the idea is you're melting the two metals to get metals, waxes together. Same thing as welding with metal, but um, and blending them um, together. So they're essentially more homogenous one. Um, at that point. Anyhow, so one way, another way to work with the wax is I can take this knife and kind of cut, and I want to be careful not to cut into myself. Waxes can be, this is sort of a softer wax, so it, you know, it's kind of like, it's, you know, it grips and holds it, so you put a lot of pressure and then slip, you'll slice into yourself. So always make sure that you're not cutting towards yourself that you're not in the in the you know you'd never want to do something like that obviously because you'd be surprised or have your thumb there and cut into it um you know take your time apply pressure but be in control um come on wax and i can kind of bend it and break it the rest of the way and i could clean up these edges um slice them down like that if i wanted to um I can warm this up. This is kind of fairly soft. I can kind of bend and change the shape of it. It's kind of thick if I were doing and I didn't cut it long enough, but um, a ring or something, but um, I want to thin that out quite a bit. It's pretty heavy, although some people like that. Um, and you can you know, shape the edges, carve into it. Um, this actually has a couple of other <laughs> layers of types of wax, kind of homemade um, blends um, sometimes can be useful. But anyway, that's why you get a little color variation there when I pull it, made a sheet of it. So here's some of that other wax I was working on. Doesn't necessarily wax will, if you have a really hard wax and a really soft wax, you can kind of blend and weld them together. I can even just stick that there, and now you're like, oh, hey, that might be good enough. Um, sorry, that might be good enough. That, that might hold, um, but it could also pop off. And if you've done all this work and it pops off um, when we're making the mold, investment mold, and then you're not gonna be happy. So you can use the soldering iron to kind of weld that together. And I can get a spot on here. Put this right there. I can get a spot on here warmed up. Um, and I can warm this a little bit. And then as they're still warm, I can kind of put them, put it down into that. Now that, again, that might be good enough, but I can also, what I also can do um, is go along and weld together. I 
use the hot tool around all the way around don't drop it over um, the edges and really get it bonded into there and the other thing about wax is um, if you've done steel welding it cools really quickly and solidifies um, to a temperature where it's hard and, and, and stable right now it's still it's like soft chocolate right there it's already like soft chocolate a little bit but it's even really soft chocolate so if i start messing with this right now that'll probably um come apart or even get fractured a little bit so it won't be that strong now if i don't like the way that looks i can use it i'll let that cool a little bit sometimes i'll have a little um, bucket of cold cool water and kind of cool that down um i don't know what this thing is um these the waxes we're going to make by the way let me just grab something quick to jump ahead to where we're not. When we get into the investment mold process, these things will have to fit inside one of these mold flasks. Um, we'll, there'll be another bunch of videos and stuff. Um, but anyway, we'll be using those um, or similar types of small things. So you think about your piece is fitting within a small, um, what is that, soup can? How many ounces? Um, or a, or, a, or a, a solo cup, you know, not the big giant ones, like a, a Dixie cup you might get. Um, your pieces should fit within that. Um, anyway, that's kind of cooled down a little bit now. And I can take a tool. Oh, what do we want? And I can get my thumb in the way. Let me see if I can show this without. I can just kind of go in and clean that up a little bit. And I can even use the brush to go in and kind of even kind of give it a soft texture and clean up the little things. Some other things you can do, um, tool. Now, you can actually you can embed this in the thing to create texture, but I'm just going to show it to you right now. You can kind of use it um, almost like sandpaper. You create a texture, but you can soften and round over with like tool, like um, that kind of fabric used in in uh, ballet or other types of fun dresses and stuff. But you can kind of sand it. And you can even, so that's really, it's got big openings and it's really kind of rough. Um, you come across more finer stuff. Um, you can kind of take away, you can get a, a smoother, almost get start to get a sheen to it. Um, and especially with harder waxes, you can almost start to polish them. And if you have um, handy some knife, um, starts to get like a smoother surface. So you're basically doing, same thing with any kind of, I'm using these right now in the wax, but any kind of sanding or braiding um, when you're, you know, even when we think of polishing, um, but before those steps, you're taking a little bit, you're just rubbing your um, smaller and smaller scratches, sorry. Um, bigger, you know, when you're using heavier things or strong, uh, higher grit sandpaper, if you're working with metal or, or wood or something else, um, the bigger the grains, the bigger the scratches, the faster your move material. But once you start to get into, well, so like, like an 80 grit would be removing a lot of material. Whereas when you get into 120, 220, it starts to refine it a little bit more and then 320 and then 400 and then, you know, six, 800, and even a thousand or 1500, um, you get a very kind of polished look to it. And then there's all, well, I'm talking about metal finishing now. Anyway, jumped ahead. Um, anyhow, harder waxes, you know, say this sort of a harder um, wax will even respond, you know, more to this sort of polishing with nylon and you can get rid of a lot of the rough marks. So if you wanted a mirror polish on your finished piece, you got to get rid of all those scratches. But the closest, you, you know, the better the wax is, you'll need to do cleaning up on the on the metal casting. Um, but the closer that um, metal casting is, uh, the wax is to the finish you want, the closer you are.